Could the Wendigo be at least one cause of the missing 411? The missing 411 is the study of a pattern or cluster of incidents where people have disappeared in a split second from forests and national parks, perhaps having been lured or snatched, but leaving absolutely no sign of how, no indication of a struggle or injury. They've just disappeared as if plucked from the air. Well, take a look at these encounters and let me know what you think about this in the comments. A couple of years back, I was visiting a park in my village with my brother. We'd only been there for around 20 minutes when he stopped in the middle of a sentence and looked up into the branches of an old oak tree behind me. I heard a branch break and I turned around too, but unfortunately I only caught the tail of the creature, seeing a pale, long and uncomfortably thin leg before it seemed to vanish behind the wide trunk despite most of the leaves already being gone. I asked my brother what he had seen, but he seemed too disturbed to answer. We decided to get back on our bikes and head on home, and when we got back, he described the creature to me. It was a pale, emaciated human with giant blue eyes that took up much of its face, other than a flat nose and thin lips. Its limbs were vastly disproportionate to the rest of its body, and it moved incredibly quickly on the brittle branches, a few of which shouldn't have been able to hold its weight. It looked down at him, blinked, and moved so quickly that it seemed to disappear from the tree entirely. Well, those boys made a lucky escape. The Wendigo, or Windigo, is an ancient creature named by Native American tribes across North America who knew it to be an extremely dangerous beast of the woods. Physical descriptions of creatures thought to be Wendigos vary wildly and are sometimes confused with Sasquatch and even skinwalkers. This truly bizarre encounter took place in New Mexico in 2019. We arrived at our secluded campsite along the river around 5pm and set up camp with our dog. The person I was with was facing the river behind me while I was facing the road behind him. Suddenly, I saw something moving behind him. The dog that was with us is very alert, strong and healthy and extremely observant, but at this moment, she just laid still and looked down at the ground. The movement behind my friend became more apparent and I watched as something ran out of the trees and into the light of the fire. It stopped right in the middle of the road, directly in the firelight, and it looked me right in the eyes. Standing on all fours, it was almost as tall as our jeep. It had long, thin legs that ended in more hooves than feet. Its skin was light grey or white, and it had a tiny head for its body size that was completely round with huge black holes for eyes. I could see each of its ribs in such detail, and then it just ran off in a circular path around us. Unlike other carnivores, the Wendigo doesn't rely on brute force or speed to pursue and capture its prey. Once a Wendigo has an unsuspecting human isolated, it lures them by speaking to them in a familiar voice, then attacks and feasts on them. Take a listen to this terrifying encounter. A family left the bustle of city life for the quiet of the country and got more than they ever bargained for. We found a great mountain community and a ranch-style house with a big back porch, windows everywhere and a lot of property. The backyard has a big grassy area and a creek that cuts the property in half. Then there are just acres of woods beyond that. The house was a foreclosure and when we asked the listing agent about it, she simply said the old family had abandoned the property. 
We really didn't think anything of it. Well, everything was fine for a while, but when the weather turned cold, things began to get weird. It started with noises from the back, and motion lights around the house started going off randomly. Well, we just put these things down to living right next to the woods at first, but then it all changed. Last night, one of the dogs was at the back door whining and scratching. Well, I assumed he needed to go to the bathroom, so I grabbed my flashlight and walked out the back door. Instantly, something felt off. The dog bolted for the back property, growling and snarling. It was a cold night, about 30 degrees, but the dog plunged straight into the creek and out the other bank, running off into the woods in the back of the property. Well, with my flashlight bouncing, I ran after him, calling his name. I got to the creek and made my way across the makeshift bridge, trying desperately to follow him. I could hear the dog still growling and barking from somewhere up ahead, and I pushed further away from the safety of the house and deeper into the woods. That's when I heard it. A shriek like I've never heard before in my life. It was a mix of a moaning wail and metal on metal. It echoed through the trees and froze me in my tracks. My dog bounded its way back to me and cowered down behind me. I swung my flashlight around wildly, looking for the source of the noise. And that's when I heard an even more terrifying noise. Out of the cold silence, my wife's voice floated all around me. Babe, the voice called out. I whipped back around and I could just barely make out the house where I had left my wife. The voice called out again. Babe, I'm right here, came the voice from deeper into the woods. Then came another voice just as clear as the other. It was my dad's voice. Come out here, it called. I swung the flashlight around and caught the briefest glint of light bouncing off eyes. The creature was in my beam of light for barely a second, but it was tall, maybe six feet, and ashen white. It had long spindly fingers that grasped onto the trunk of a pine tree, and then it was gone. I turned back and ran towards the house. I ran headlong into the icy creek and stumbled. My dog ran past me, making it back to the yard and up to the porch. I dug my hands into the freezing, muddy bank and pulled myself out, not stopping to look back. When I reached the porch, I scrambled inside. My wife ran over to me, asking what had happened. And I just shook my head. I'm not certain myself what had happened. I felt a growing sense of dread tonight as the sun began to fall. We kept the dogs inside and I haven't dared to look out the back. But as I sit here typing, one by one, my motion lights in the backyard keep turning on. Sometimes I think our imagination can create a more terrifying picture than the real thing, but perhaps not when it comes to the Wendigo. I had an experience with a Wendigo in northern Minnesota in a state forest, very close to, if not on, a reservation. I was staying with some friends and they have a camper in their yard by the lake for guests to sleep in. That night I'd walked down to the camper from the house with my miniature dash hound at around midnight. I never thought to lock the door because... Really, I figured it's in the middle of the woods, so there was nothing to worry about. I was wrong. I had closed the curtains, though, thank God, and I was having trouble falling asleep because my anxiety was going mad. My friend's dogs were barking outside and their geese wouldn't stop honking. My dog, who usually sleeps under the covers, was sitting on my hip, while I laid on my side and I could feel her turning her head back and forth like she was trying to track something outside. I tried tucking her under the blankets to calm her down but she kept returning to her perch on my hip. Well, I have no idea how long I laid there. 
I would say at least 40 minutes when all of a sudden I heard my friend's voice outside the camper. Anybody in there? Hmm? And what sounded like claws dragging down the side of the camper. I almost called back to her when I realised that she and her husband were both fast asleep by now and my friend knew I was in there. She wouldn't ask if anybody was in there. It was then I noticed that everything had gone absolutely silent outside. The dogs and the geese had stopped their carrying on and the gusts of wind had even stopped. It was the kind of silence you hear about in horror stories, how the woods go mute when something evil is in the area. Then another thought hit me. My dog would normally be going nuts barking at the door if that had been anything human. But she was frozen, perched on my hip, dead quiet and shaking. I remembered that I hadn't locked the door, but I didn't dare move. I have no idea how long I laid there debating whether I should get up and lock the door, but it felt like an eternity. I thought it may have been a skinwalker at first, but remembered that they don't mimic the voices of your loved ones to lure you into the woods. Wendigo do. I knew that these creatures or demons or whatever they are can lure humans out of their abodes if they make eye contact with you and everything in me was screaming to make sure I didn't look outside. I snuck a peek at my phone for the first time before I lay down. It was about 2.30am. As soon as I laid down, the wind kicked back up, and my friend's basset hounds erupted into howls as they came running down to the camper and a little ways into the trees, and even the geese started making their noise again. I heard the basset hounds as they came back to the camper and they barked a few more times before they lay down outside the door as though to protect me. I told my friend what had happened the next morning. I think I was hoping she would say she had come down to the camper to check on me but she just confirmed what I already knew. They had gone to bed as soon as I had left the house. If you enjoyed this video, check out my video featuring Bigfoot. It's on screen now. And remember, it's a strange world. Keep your eyes and ears open and be kind. Cheerio!